Hi there. Thanks to Street Fight for having me. All right, here we go. So um, today I'm going to talk about something a little bit different uh, than I usually talk about, uh, and that is the future of work. Um, it's a topic that ever more is in the news, and it's something that we feel like the narrative isn't quite right. So first off, we believe that the future of work is not the gig economy, or at least not the gig economy how typically people think of it. You know, by their own admission, commoditized platforms like Uber, TaskRabbit, Instacart are really providing supplemental income to their professionals. Uber says that half of its partners drive for 10 hours or fewer a week. TaskRabbit says that 90% of its taskers use the platform to pay one to three bills a month. And Intuit, that has looked into its payroll data, has shown that fewer than 5% of the people on these platforms are using it as their sole source of income. So don't get me wrong, these platforms are awesome consumer innovations, um, but we don't believe that we should be looking to them as the models for the future of work. They're great for providing flexibility and a bump in supplemental income, but ultimately, the future of work is the skilled professional. These are individuals who have a unique skill to offer, such as carpenters, accountants, massage therapists, and you know, in contrast to the gig platforms, more than two-thirds of the professionals on Thumbtack are earning their full-time living doing this trade. Um, now, you may be thinking that I'm just here sort of pumping up my book and talking about this sector since we obviously serve it, um, but we actually have sort of a, a more important and a bigger mission, um, and that is that we believe that these folks are the future of the middle class and the future of work in this country, and we want to make sure that both policy as well as technology is working to serve their needs. So let me back up my claims that actually the service sector and specifically the skilled professional is the future of work. So this is a long-term trend. Uh, this isn't something new in any way. Uh, at this point, service sector jobs make up 80% of the U.S. economy. Um, that's at five percentage points in the last decade as manufacturing continues to slide. And this isn't slowing down in any way. If anything, it's accelerating. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that in the coming decade, 94% uh, of all jobs will be service sector jobs. And interestingly, if you look within the service sector, you see a divergence in the job growth that is happening. So on the bottom, you have routine cognitive and routine manual jobs. Sort of truck driving would be one. On the top, you have non-routine manual. That would be a plumber or non-routine cognitive, an accountant, say. These jobs have grown. Um, and the interesting thing that we're seeing is that the routine tasks have been increasingly performed by machines, and abstract non-routine jobs are rewarding those that are trained to perform them with higher incomes and better job prospects. And um, the scary thing is that this is just the start. Um, so this is a pretty dramatic step, but researchers at Oxford uh, put out a study that claimed that 47% of all employment in the, in the United States is at risk of automation. Now, certainly headline grabbing. Um, what I'm certain of is that it's not zero. Um, it's, probably, it's certainly not 100%, but it's a significant fraction of the US economy. And so if we want our future for our children and our colleagues and our friends to be bright, we need to make sure that these folks are going into the non-routine sector. And that really is the skilled professional sector. An interesting thing that um, is happening is that uh, these professionals are increasingly working for themselves. Uh, this is a breakdown of the type of business tax filings that have happened in the United States, and C-Corps have shrunk since the 1980s. Um, and sole proprietorships as well as S-Corps and partnerships, which are really pass-through entities, um, are growing. Uh, the freelancers union at this point estimates that 53 million Americans make their living as a freelancer, as an independent service professional of some type. Um, this is partly a function of the changing nature of work, you know, the shift away from manufacturing, but it's actually also a function of technology. 
You know, there are sites like tools like uh, Zenefits and Gusto, uh, which are lowering the cost of time intensive back office tasks like running payroll and managing benefits. Companies like WeWork are providing a more flexible office space arrangement. Uh, but there's a lot more that service professionals need uh, to be successful as independent businesses. Um, and above all else, they need help finding customers. Uh, this is a breakdown of all the things uh, our professionals and others that we've surveyed has, have told us they needed. Uh, the number one, the, the sort of dramatic number there, is the 51% who say they need more customers. Now, I'm sure that is not a surprise to any of you in the audience today, um, but you know, it's also, it's, we've put these folks in a tough bind, right? Um, the consumer landscape is shifting. First it went online, now it's going to mobile, now it's fragmenting within these platform. And honestly, it's hard for these folks to keep up. And the reality is, they shouldn't have to be skilled online marketers to be successful business owners. They really should only have to serve their customers well and provide a great service to be successful. And so it's our job as technology providers to really take care of that, to do the rest. So at this point, I hope that I have uh, convinced you that the future of work is already here. Um, and furthermore, that it is not the gig economy, but rather it's the real economy. It's the one that we're all working to serve and improve and provide solutions for. Um, and that's certainly what Thumbtack has been working hard at. Um, you know, our goal is to connect customers with the right professionals for whatever they need to get done. And our customers are now spending more than a billion dollars a year across a thousand different categories um, all around the United States. Um, we've attracted more than 200,000 paying professionals, um, and we've done that without a sales force. Um, we have zero people in sales. Um, and we've been able to do that because we solve their core problem, finding customers. That's what professionals want. Uh, when we've run surveys, 60% uh, of them say they, look every, they spend time every single day looking for new customers. Uh, if you add in the weekly, you get to 80% are looking every week for more customers. Now, I believe that it's still early days uh, in changing how small independent businesses and skilled professionals leverage technology to connect with customers um, because we're still far from the goal of time and talent being the only requirements for being a successful professional. Now, that's what we're fighting for. Uh, we believe that for professionals, they should be able to focus on what they do best and we'll take care of the rest. Our promise to them is that they can come to Thumbtack and grow their business. And for customers, we're fighting to remove the anxiety and frustration that goes into improving your house or planning your wedding or finding a, the right tutor for your child. And really, with Thumbtack, you can just consider it done. Which brings me to Sandra. So Sandra is a professional on Thumbtack. She's a lawyer. And uh, she started uh, with a dream of being an actress. Uh, she was in LA, uh, she was working hard at that, um, until unfortunately she had a bout with cancer uh, that threatened her voice. Uh, she was worried that she would never be able to sort of speak or sing and her career was definitely threatened. And it was that point that she realized she needed to do something a bit more um, stable. And so she went to law school. And in talking to her, uh, it's so awesome to hear the pride in her voice. Uh, she tells this story uh, about um, a gentleman who, uh, because of a shoddy contract, um, got caught with $90,000 of loans uh, that he was supposedly on the hook for. She was able to get those loans forgiven, uh, which kept him out of bankruptcy and actually saved his marriage. And she sort of recounts that she still remembers the hug that this guy gave her when the judge sort of provided that ruling. And so the, the pride in her work and the love for her clients just comes through when you talk to Sandra and professionals like her. Um, and that's not to say that being an independent business owner is easy. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's very trying, particularly at the start. Um, but it certainly is incredibly fulfilling. Um, and so I guess what I want to leave you with is that the future of work is very bright. The number on the right, the 29%, is the number of Americans who say that 
they are engaged at work. The number on the left is the percent of our professionals who say they love their work. So my hope is that what we're doing at Thumbtack and sort of what the rest of uh, this industry is doing to help empower these professionals to start their own businesses, to leverage their time and talent to deliver great service to customers is really building the future of the US economy. And that's something that we should all take great pride in. And it also speaks to the immense opportunity that we still have in front of us. It's still very much day one, uh, and it's an exciting time to be doing what we're doing. Um, so with that, um, I wanted to turn it over to just sort of a Q&A. Uh, it can be about the future of, of work. It can be about Thumbtack. I'm sort of happy to take any and all questions. Thank you very much. Oh, hold on. Let's get you a mic. The, there you go. Forty-seven percent that you had. Um, what's the average typically? The forty-seven percent refers to the uh, the risk of jobs of, to automation. Right. Uh, what's the average been over the last say the last five ten years? How's that either increased and how's it compare? So, the good point, and this is something that's important, is that uh, to date automation has not necessarily reduced the total number of jobs. It has certainly shifted the type of jobs that we have in this country, but even in manufacturing, we're producing twice as much as we ever have, if you look back over the last 20 years, but we're doing it with fewer workers and more robots. Um, so this isn't to say that jobs are going away, but the routine ones that can be automated probably will be automated. Cool. I mean, I think most of all, you, know, you think about the gig economy, you think about an, an Uber, you know, they're all working to actively automate cars. Drivers will not be needed at some point. I don't know when that's going to happen, um, but that's an enormous number of workers who are going to be displaced. Um, and so we need to make sure that we're creating opportunities for those folks. Thank you. Yep. And it can be about Thumbtack or other stuff if you guys aren't interested in the local future of jobs. Uh, since Thumbtack is like a platform between consumer and, 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 and business providers, I know you guys put a lot of attention on how to help business providers. On the other side, um, how did you like acquire consumer, you know, let more people aware of your, your, your website and, and create businesses for those uh, providers? Yeah, so, you know, acquiring customers is the hard part, ultimately. Um, one venture capitalist I pitched had a good line where he said, uh, you can corner the... You, you can't corner the market just by getting all the supply, but you can corner the market if you get all the demand. Um, and they're the sort of uh, powerful asset to ultimately have. And we've ultimately been able to reach them because there's never been a brand or destination that has emerged as a reliable way to get things done. Um, Google is the catch-all brand when you don't know where to go. Um, but I, I'd argue that uh, the directories that are out there have provided um, sort of an insufficient solution. Uh, the other marketplace experiences have been pretty thin, either from a category or geography basis. And you know, we're at this point the biggest and the broadest, and that helps us make a claim to these folks that nobody else can, which you can come and just consider it done. So you know, word of mouth, uh, search. Uh, we almost do no paid marketing on the consumer front, um, but you'll see that change over the next six to 12 months. Yep. Hey there. Hey so there. Uh, how do you fit in with um, the budget that small businesses spend? And how do you fit in with the, their other advertising budget and the, and the other folks that are selling to them, the media companies in this space? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, what we found is that there's only a budget for advertising solutions or marketing products. There is no limit to the budget that professionals will spend on more paying customers. Um, and so I'd argue that the challenge uh, that many businesses face in getting distribution is that they're selling a tool um, rather than selling what the professionals or businesses want, which is a paying customer. So the closer you can get to just providing a paying customer, the easier it is to sell, and ultimately the more uncapped the growth potential is. Um, so what we find is that there are professionals that come in different stripes. They're the folks who just want to hit their you know, $3,500 a month and then just golf and hang out with their buddies. Um, and then there's the ones who want to build an empire and want to build the biggest damn service company they can. And they will just keep buying uh, sort of customers as fast as they can serve them. 
Um, so I think if you're delivering revenue and you can show that in a consistent and reliable way, uh, budgets really don't hamper your growth at all. There's a question right here. One sec. Thank you. Marco, um, yeah. on the morning of the California primary, as a thought leader in this space, uh, any thoughts on future regulatory environment? Um, I don't have any thoughts on the future regulatory environment. Um, the one thing, so we're, uh, you know, obviously non, not a political entity, uh, but we view it as part of our job to represent the interests and needs of these professionals and make sure that they are being heard. Um, so we run big surveys uh, of our professionals and we take that content and we deliver it to policymakers. Um, and one of the big things that we keep hearing uh, over and over is that um, their number one concern is not taxes. It is occupational licensing and general regulation to um, starting and running a small business. Um, they want less red tape and they want a more efficient system. Um, the other thing that we often hear and we sort of represent on their behalf is that they are scared to go out on their own because they can't afford to lose the benefits that their employer provides. Um, so we've you know, said on their behalf that benefits portability is something that would really help empower the small businesses and entrepreneurs of America. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I can't really see. So Marco, I, I, I know you're not a political organization, but you had a really fascinating time when Jeb Bush came by your office. What, what are some of your reflections on that? Thanks for putting me on the spot, Peter. <laughs> um, so Jeb Bush did come to visit our office. Uh, this is when he was still a candidate. And uh, we invited all the candidates to come and talk. And we, as a group of sort of citizens here, are curious about the process. Um, but then we also wanted to channel the questions that our pros had uh, to candidates. Um, admittedly, though, the issues that our professionals face are primarily at the local and state level. Um, that's where the sort of brunt of the regulation and uh, issues that they face emanate from. Um, the big thing that happens at the federal level is the welfare state and how benefits are provided, be it through employees or hopefully in the future just to individuals. Um, so we got to have a dialogue with him uh, and we would be happy to have all the other candidates come have a dialogue with us too. Hey Marco, uh, what percentage of your professionals have storefronts? Uh, almost none. Uh, so you know the service sector is super, super broad, uh, right? It includes federal employees, people who work for IBM, um, but the biggest number of them, right, the freelancers union number of 57 million Americans, um, are independent sort of professionals of various stripes. Um, these are folks who typically don't have a storefront. Uh, they typically have very few or no employees. Um, and really what they do is they sell their time. That's what being a service professional is all about. You sell the time and talent and hard work and knowledge that comes with it. Um, and that, we believe, is going to be an ever bigger part of the economy and one that sort of these technology companies have to work to support. There's one right here. Hi. I was curious to see uh, what's the next milestone for Thumbtack? So uh, we want to facilitate customers getting to done. And to date, we have focused on matching them with the right professional. Um, ultimately, that's the biggest challenge when you're trying to get something done you know, around the house or for a big party. Who's going to do the job, making sure that they're capable and qualified? Um, that's something that we feel ever um, stronger about, that we can deliver on that across the country, across all these categories. And so the next challenge that you'll see us try and tackle is making it convenient to sort of administer the job, to communicate, to schedule, to pay, um, because those are all things that stand in the way of you getting to done as quickly as easily and easily as possible. Now, lots of people have tried to do this. Uh, we certainly won't be the first. Um, but what we're able to do is keep it very focused on the customer. Um, you're not going to see us build standalone tools for professionals to be their system of record scheduling. Um, I think that's a hard thing to pull off. 
And it's hard because it's hard to convince a small business to change their workflow just for this hypothetical sort of convenience or efficiency. Um, what we can do, though, is say, hey, to the customer, do you want to pay online? Do you want to pay with a credit card? And when you have a paying customer, pros will do a lot to sort of modify how they go about their business to earn that business, to get that customer to work with them. Um, and so you'll see us sort of make all these steps, uh, but be very focused on the customer side of the equation, making it easier for them at every step. All right, well, thank you to Street Fight and to all of you. Have a great rest of your day.